read by newgate novelist the readjustment by mary hunter austin emma jeffreys had been dead and buried three days this sister who had come to the funeral had taken emma's child away with her and the house was swept and aired then when it seemed there was the least occasion for it emma came back the neighbour woman who had nursed her was the first to know it it was about seven of the evening in a mellow gloom the neighbour woman was sitting on her own stoop with her arms wrapped in her apron and all at once she found herself going along the street under an urgent sense that emma needed her she was halfway down the block before she recollected that this was impossible for mrs jeffreys was dead and buried but as soon as she came opposite the house she was aware of what had happened it was all open to the summer air except that it was a little neater not otherwise than the rest of the street it was quite dark but the presence of emma jeffreys streamed from it and betrayed it more than a candle it streamed out steadily across the garden and even as it reached her mixed with the smell of the damp mignonette the neighbour woman owned to herself that she had always known emma would come back a sight stranger if she wouldn't thought the woman who had nursed her she wasn't ever one to throw off things easily emma jeffreys had taken death as she had taken everything in life hard she had met it with the same bright surface competency that she had presented to the squalor of the encompassing desertness to the insuperable commonness of sim jeffreys to the affliction of her crippled child and the intensity of her wordless struggle against it had caught the attention of the townspeople and held it in a shocked curious awe she was so long a-dying lying there in that little low house hearing the abhorred footsteps going about her rooms and the vulgar procedure of the community encroach upon her like the advances of the sand wastes on an unwatered field for emma had always wanted things different wanted them with a fury of intentness that implied offensiveness in things as they were and the townspeople had taken offence the more so because she was not to be surprised in any inaptitude for their own kind of success do what you could you could never catch emma jeffreys in a wrapper after three o'clock in the afternoon and she would never talk about the child in a country where so little ever happened that even trouble was a godsend if it gave you something to talk about it was reported that she did not even talk to sim but there the common resentment got back at her if she had thought to effect anything with sim jeffreys against the benumbing spirit of the place the evasive hopefulness the large sense of leisure that ungirt the loins if she still hoped somehow to get away with him to some place for which by her dress by her manner she seemed for ever and unassailably fit it was foregone that nothing would come of it they knew sim jeffreys better than that yet so vivid had been the force of her wordless dissatisfaction that when the fever took her and she went down like a pasteboard figure in the damp the wonder was that nothing toppled with her and as if she too had felt herself indispensable emma jeffreys had come back the neighbour woman crossed the street and as she passed the far corner of the garden jeffreys spoke to her he had been standing she did not know how long a time behind the syringa bush and moved even with her along the fence until they came to the gate she could see in the dusk that before speaking he wet his lips with his tongue she's in there he said at last emma he nodded i've been sleeping at the store since but i thought i'd be more comfortable as soon as i opened the door there she was did you see her no 
how do you know then don't you know the neighbour felt there was nothing to say to that come in he whispered huskily they slipped by the rose tree and the wisteria and sat down on the porch at the side a door swung inward behind them they felt the presence in the dusk beating like a pulse what do you think she wants said jeffreys do you reckon it's the boy like enough he's better off with his aunt there was no one here to take care of him like his mother wanted he raised his voice unconsciously with a note of justification addressing the room behind i am sending fifty dollars a month he said he can go with the best of them he went on at length to explain all the advantage that was to come to the boy from living at pasadena and the neighbour woman bore him out in it he was glad to go urged jeffreys to the room he said it was what his mother would have wanted they were silent then a long time while the presence seemed to swell upon them and encroached upon the garden finally i gave ziegler the order for the monument yesterday jeffreys threw out appeasingly it's to cost three hundred and fifty the presence stirred the neighbour thought she could fairly see the controlled tolerance with which emma jeffreys endured the evidence of sim's ineptitudes they sat on helplessly without talking after that until the woman's husband came to the fence and called her don't go begged sim hush she said do you want all the town to know you had naught but good from emma living and no call to expect harm from her now it's natural she should come back if if she was lonesome like in the place where she's gone to emma wouldn't come back to this place jeffreys protested without she wanted something well then you've got to find out said the neighbour woman all the next day she saw whenever she passed the house that emma was still there it was shut and barred but the presence lurked behind the folded blinds and fumbled at the doors when it was night and the moths began in the columbine under the windows it went out and walked in the garden jeffreys was waiting at the gate when the neighbour woman came he sweated with helplessness in the warm dusk and the presence brooded upon them like an apprehension that grows by being entertained she wants something he appealed but i can't make out what emma knows she is welcome to everything i've got everybody knows i've been a good provider the neighbour woman remembered suddenly the only time she had ever drawn close to emma jeffreys touching the boy they had sat up with it together all one night in some childish ailment and she had ventured a question what does his father think and emma had turned her a white hard face of surpassing dreariness i don't know she admitted he never says there's more than providing suggested the neighbour woman yes there's feeling but she had enough to do to put up with me i had no call to be troubling her with such he left off to mop his forehead and began again feelings he said there's times a man gets so wore out with feelings he doesn't have them any more he talked and presently it grew clear to the woman that he was voiding all the stuff of his life as if he had sickened on it and was now done it was a little soul knowing itself and not good to see what was singular was that the presence left off walking in the garden came and caught like a gossamer on the ivy tree swayed by the breath of his broken sentences he talked and the neighbour woman saw him for once as he saw himself and emma snared and floundering in an inexplicable unhappiness he had been disappointed too she had never relished the man he was and it made him ashamed that was why he had never gone away lest he should make her ashamed among her own kind 
he was her husband he could not help that though he was sorry for it but he could keep the offence where least was made of it and there was a child she had wanted a child but even then he had blundered begotten a cripple upon her he blamed himself utterly searched out the roots of his youth for the answer to that until the neighbour woman flinched to hear him but the presence stayed he had never talked to his wife about the child how should he there was the fact the advertisement of his incompetence and she had never talked to him that was the one blessed and unassailable memory that she had spread silence like a balm over his hurt in return for it he had never gone away he had resisted her that he might save her from showing among her own kind how poor a man he was with every word of this ran the fact of his love for her as he had loved her with all the stripes of clean and uncleanness he bared himself as a child without knowing and the presence stayed the talk trailed off at last to the commonplaces of consolation between the retchings of his spirit the presence lessened and streamed toward them on the wind of the garden when it touched them like the warm air of noon that lies sometimes in hollow places after nightfall the neighbour woman rose and went away the next night she did not wait for him when a rod outside the town it was a very little one the burrowing owls woo wooed she hung up her apron and went to talk with emma jeffreys the presence was there drawn in lying close she found the key between the wisteria and the first pillar of the porch but as soon as she opened the door she felt the chill that might be expected by one intruding on emma jeffreys in her own house the lord is my shepherd said the neighbour woman it was the first religious phrase that occurred to her then she said the whole of the psalm and after that a hymn she had come in through the door and stood with her back to it and her hand upon the knob everything was just as mrs jeffreys had left it with the waiting air of a room kept for company m she said boldly when the chill had abated a little before the sacred words m jeffreys i've got something to say to you and you've got to hear she added with firmness as the white curtains stirred duskily at the window you wouldn't be talked to about your troubles when you were here before and we humoured you but now there is sim to be thought of i guess you heard what you came for last night and got good of it maybe it would have been better if sim had said things all along instead of hoarding them in his heart but anyway he has said them now and what i want to say is if you was staying on with the hope of hearing it again you'd be making a mistake you was an uncommon woman emma jeffreys and there didn't none of us understand you very well nor do you justice maybe but sim is only a common man and i understand him because i'm that way myself and if you think he'll be opening his heart to you every night or be any different from what he's always been on account of what's happened that's a mistake too and in a little while if you stay it will be as bad as it always was men are like that you'd better go now while there's understanding between you she stood staring into the darkling room that seemed suddenly full of turbulence and denial it seemed to beat upon her and take her breath but she held on you've got to go m and i'm going to stay until you do she said this with finality and then began again the lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and repeated the passage to the end then as the presence sank before it you better go emma persuasively and again after an interval he shall deliver thee in six troubles yea in seven shall no evil touch thee 
the presence gathered itself and was still she could make out that it stood over against the opposite corner by the gilt easel with the crayon portrait of the child for thou shalt forget thy misery thou shalt remember it as waters that are past concluded the neighbour woman as she heard jeffreys on the gravel outside what the presence had wrought upon him in the night was visible in his altered mien he looked more than anything else to be in need of sleep he had eaten his sorrow and that was the end of it as it is with men i came to see if there was anything i could do for you said the woman neighbourly with her hand upon the door i don't know as there is said he i'm much obliged but i don't know as there is you see whispered the woman over her shoulder not even to me she felt the tug of her heart as the presence swept past her the neighbour went out after that and walked in the ragged street past the schoolhouse across the creek below the town out by the fields over the headgate and back by the town again it was full nine of the clock when she passed the jeffreys house it looked except for being a little neater not other than the rest of the street the door was open and the lamp was lit she saw jeffreys black against it he sat reading a book like a man at ease in his own house End of The Readjustment by Mary Hunter Austin